Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to dramatically increase the performance of your graphs. I'm doing this by selectively enabling and disabling collision as I travel near all the relevant trees. Let's get started. One way to improve speed is on Tree Spawner. Make these meshes have no collision. Let's see, two array elements. I think I forgot to set the second one on this. No collision. Save that. And now when we play, everything is fast and great, but we can't interact with it. So under Tree Spawner, let's uh, make it so we can interact with it. I'm going to add from the box on component begin overlap. If the other actor is get player pawn equal equal, so if it overlaps the player pawn, let's add a branch here. Get components. By class instanced static mesh for each loop on all of these instance static meshes. Each one set collision enabled. And I'll set the collision enabled for, let's just do query and physics. Compile, save. Okay, so these trees start off with no collision, but then when we get close we should be enabling collision. Not working there. Now it's working. So if you spawn inside it, it doesn't work. Also, I'm not able to remove these trees. So let's uh, fix first the unable to remove trees. Third person character. I'm going to add a little debug to this. Draw debug type for duration. Compile, save, and Right click play outside here, out and in again, there we go, and we're not even hitting the trees. So I'm not exactly sure what's happening, but I think it has something to do with the level of detail on the tree not having collision enabled, something like that. But I also um, forgot to enable nanite on these trees. And I find that enabling nanite uh, just makes this not be a problem. So let's try enabling nanite and playing and seeing what happens. Still nothing. That's fine. I'm going to try closing and restarting now that I've enabled nanite. All right, so I haven't done anything except for closing and restarting the editor. Let's try this again. Get close to it, and now I can remove them. So whatever happened, um, enabling Nanite and restarting the editor fixes the problem. If you want to do it without enabling Nanite, I'm not exactly sure what you need to do, but look into making sure collision is enabled on LOD 0. That's the best my Googling has told me. Okay, so let's turn off debug on the third person character again. None. Compile, save that. And now let's fix this. If we spawn inside it, there's no collision. Well, that's solvable by back under main tree chopping, going into tree spawner, and selectively spawning with collision or not. So back under 
BP tree spawner. When we set collision enabled, I'm going to add a variable. Collision enabled. Expose it and drop it in here and set it to true. Well, actually, I need to do it only once, so let's hook it up to complete it right here. Set it to true when we've enabled collision. And then in tree spawner, we're going to add a branch here. If collision is enabled, so let's get actor property. Properties collision enabled. Grab that. And if it's enabled, we'll output to B. So A is going to be collision not enabled. Hook this up first. And we want to do it on both of these paths. So A is not enabled, and B is enabled. So on this second static mesh spawner, I'll set collision enabled. Block all dynamic, and hook that up, and right here. Block all dynamic, and for the second one, block all dynamic. Hook that up, save again, and let's play from the inside, play from here. And there we go. Since we started inside it, it turned on collision as it was generating. If the trees were already generated, it turned on collision via set collision enabled. For the ones that weren't already on, this catches all of them. So, fantastic. All right, let's um, crank things up a little bit. I'm going to change the line trace by channel over to triggered so that we can just blast away a bunch of trees. And let's just make this bigger and see if it works uh, without hitches. Right click play here. And there we go. It took a little time to spawn in, but not too bad. Trees get removed just fine, and if we're at the border, let's say that's a border. We can get fairly close to some of these trees before it lets us remove them. And also, as we run across more and more borders, right now we're setting the tree spawner actor property collision enabled and we're never clearing it, which means as we go longer and longer, more and more trees are going to have collision enabled, and it'll just get slower and slower to regenerate these trees. So we can add another event from the box. Scroll down, on component end overlap. Let's see if the player pawn is equal to the other actor leaving. And of course, if you have multiple players, you might need to change this up a little bit. Branch. Let's just set collision to not be enabled. That way, when it refreshes, it'll not refresh with collision. And we can add another check here so that we don't necessarily set collision to not enabled when it shouldn't be. And that is if collision is already enabled and it's the player pawn leaving disable collision no need to disable collision if it's already disabled all right compile save let's test that out play from here all right so this is another boundary and now, let's start respawning trees, and now I can't destroy these trees over here. So perfect, they've respawned without collision. And if I cross over, they have collision again. Excellent. 
And I don't know if you noticed that, but I kind of ran into a tree and snapped out of it. And that is because the bounds of the mesh that we're using to enable collision exactly match the bounds of the PCG volume. So when a tree is created on the exact edge of the mesh, that allows for a little overlap. So the way we can fix it is by creating another bounds around this one. So if I duplicate this box collider right here, I have my second collision box. And if I go into construction scripts, I can update the size of this second box. So the first box right here has our collision script already on it. So I'm just going to reuse that, rename it to collision. And the second one, I'm going to rename PCG volume so that it's clear what I'm using it for. And so collision, I want to be wider than PCG volume. So I'm actually going to disconnect this here and move it on over and hook PCG volume up in its place. I'll use a second one for collision, second set box extent. And this one, I'm going to take grid size divided by two and add a fixed value to it. That way, in case we have, um, say, a beam that goes 2,000 in length, we can just add 2,000 to the collision. And when we're at the length that the beam could connect from, all of a sudden collision is enabled. So this will give us nice and fine control in a way that is very useful for games. Then I'll make a vector out of the x and y, and the z I can set to 10,000 again, and hook that up here, and hook collision on up, and compile, save, and now if I look at the viewport again, we have our second box. All right, so let's go ahead and test this out. Just drop a tree spawner in the world. And so the trees are going to the outer collision box. So we need to eliminate them from that and restrict it to the inner one. In tree spawner, I can add a get actor data node, which I can then hook up into the bounding shape. But before I do that, I need to filter out the data which I can do if I filter by tag. I just need to set the tags on each of these volumes. And so back under tree spawner, I'm going to set the tag on this one to PCG volume. I keep missing that M. OK. And this one to collision. And back in tree spawner, I'm going to set filter by tag keep to PCG volume. And then if I add more colliders, it won't impact this because I'm only keeping the one that I care about. Now I plug that into the bounding shape, save this. And you might see that the trees still go to the outside volume, but if you move it, it should force a refresh and you'll see that they're constrained to the inner volume. Perfect, so let's test this out. If I clear the PCG here, clean it up and right click play, I'm outside the volume now, nothing's despawning. I get a little closer and there we go. We're chopping down trees. And if I go away, refresh it, nothing again. Perfect. So that is working. Let's remove this and crank up spawner spawner a little bit. I'm just going to extend the bounds of the spline cover the entire landscape, or nearly so. And I'm also going to crank up the grid size because everything's a little more efficient now. So let's try this out. And let's see if I got the angle right. Play from here. There we go. That's a lot faster than it used to be. And we can remove masses of trees. And they respawn pretty smoothly. And if you find your trees aren't showing up as expected, you may want to go into your landscape streaming proxies, just select all of these, and look for is spatially loaded, and just uncheck that. 
Right now, this method isn't working too well with world partition, and I'm going to work on updating that. But for now, if you uncheck this, all the landscape will load and everything will intersect and be able to spawn points. Just like that. All right, let's do one more thing for extra stress testing. In third person character, I'm going to replace this line trace by channel with a multi sphere trace by channel. In the start, I'm going to get actor location. And the end, I'm also going to get actor location. The radius, let's do 2000 to match our collision enable range. And I'll hook this on up. Now for the out hit, I'm going to do a for each loop and just plug each hit into this break hit result, which will then go through and trigger the remove tree on everything. And lastly, under character movement, let's just crank up the max acceleration to, let's say, 3500, max walk speed 3500, max jump Z velocity 3500, and let's see what this has done. I click play, now I can run fast, and as I'm running, I can destroy loads and loads of trees, and I can jump really high. And everything is still running smoothly. If it isn't for you, try lowering your tree density or setting your grid size down so things can be a little more efficient. All right, so this time we set up collision to dynamically enable when you get close. Next time, we will set up a landscape material that will allow us to start creating biomes efficiently.